Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here checking in on this uh, Tuesday evening, August 11th, 2020, about 9.15 p.m. West Coast time here in California. Take a look at the Earthquake 3D globe there. It shows the latest earthquake in the green flag, 4.9, uh, well south here, south of Mexico region, kind of in a little cluster area where we've seen some older earthquake activity, but nothing big at the moment. Of course, they, uh, they can have big earthquakes, but uh, right now we're just looking at a 4.9 magnitude quake. California still rocking and rolling a little bit. A little bit of earthquake activity still taking place. Therefore, we are leaving the earthquake watch in effect um, on the channel. Taking a look at the uh, USGS map here. This is the all magnitudes over the last day. Latest uh, quake there on the map. It's going to be this little red circle there. 1.7, nothing big, over towards Fontana, California. Swarming is still taking place here, folks. A little bit new information on this activity is the uh, occurrence, I guess if you will, of a separate swarm a little bit further south. And that's this cluster of quakes here just northwest of Brawley here. Most of the, or well, all of these quakes are taking place on the Brawley Seismic Zone, this fault system here, which is uh, kind of like an extension of the San Andreas Fault, kind of connects the uh, San Andreas Fault there, the southern tip, down to the Imperial Fault, which is this uh, other section here. But uh, they do definitely have a lot of relation uh, to each other, and that's kind of why it's still an area to watch. You know, we're not seeing this die down completely. Therefore, uh, the Earthquake Watch will remain in effect. The new earthquake activity is this little section right here. Not a whole lot of quakes, but these are all newer quakes, and they are separate and a ways away from the uh, activity that's, well, that we seen yesterday, right? Yesterday we seen a pretty good amount. A lot of it has dropped off. Trust me, there's a lot more than what you see here, but uh, just over the last day, uh, this is what we're looking at here. But I guarantee you there's uh, definitely been a large amount of, uh, of quakes taking place there. Go ahead, probably should add them all up on here just for the heck of it. Um, let's see here, we can go, well, we'll go ahead and add seven days, all magnitudes here. Since we're zoomed in here on a little specific area. Of course the, uh, you know, orange, here's the little graph over there that tells you kind of what the colors represent. Um, of course, red going to be the last earthquake within the last hour. Yesterday, we were seeing numerous red circles out here in the Salton Sea region during that swarm. Tonight, not the case here, but uh, it's still happening. Orange indicating the uh, activity that's just taken place today. And as you can see, most of it has kind of um, died down a little bit. But this area down here to the south is something to watch as it's, uh, you know, not just one or two quakes away from these separate swarm areas it's just it's it's a, it's a cluster of new swarms of a new swarm there and in a totally different location more to the south uh this might be a good thing and then maybe it not uh, i'm just kind of glad it's not right right at the tip there i'm glad we're not seeing a whole new swarm right at the southern end of the san andreas fault there that dark red line but that doesn't you know this activity down here doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing uh, just still telling me that there's definitely a lot of pressure out there and still some uh, sensitive regions uh, experiencing some slippage out there. And that's something we need to watch. Uh, this hasn't gone away, and I don't believe we're over uh, over the, uh, the worry of it yet. Bring this back down to the one day all magnitude so we don't cluster the, uh, the entire map. So yeah, swarming still continue. There is a new swarm. I would definitely call that a new swarm south of the region, roughly about, uh, we're looking at about five miles or so further south than this swarm. But if you want to include this one as well, then we're looking a little bit further there, probably about 10, 15 miles or so, but uh, still within the Brawley Seismic Zone, which is a, uh, again, an extension of the San Andreas Fault, so to speak. There's a little bit of information on it. There Actually, there's some little map I found here in Timbler. Um, which I go to quite often there, but this kind of shows you the area here. You got the Brawley Seismic Zone, and it shows you some of the old earthquakes and some older swarms that we've seen. 
Um, I don't know if this includes a 2012 swarm. I don't see that. Uh, I think that was a little bit further. Um, let's see. What are we, oh, yeah, it does include it right there. Why was I looking at that? Okay, yeah, 2012 swarm um, in the red. And looks like some other swarming back there uh, further back in time in the black. And if you notice there, it kind of looks as though... Um, it's away from the area that we're seeing swarm uh, today and yesterday. I don't think we had a specific swarm out here like we're seeing with this section. This was just cluttered yesterday in this area. And we even seen a little bit of migration to the north, uh, which was kind of unusual and, and uh, worrisome, worrisome a little bit. But a lot of the swarms, the further the, the, uh, the past swarms have been further south, so to speak just it's you know what does it all mean it it's uh it's just something to ponder on folks you know i'm just i i'd be a little bit more worried if this thing is migrating to the north but right now with the new swarm going to the south uh i believe that might be a good thing you know i want to believe it's a, a good thing that that we're not heading towards the uh the southern tip of the San Andreas fault system but that doesn't mean that you know it's that the worry is gone so we'll just we'll have to see folks what happens here this is kind of like the trimmer map this is a Cascadia monitoring system in the Pacific Northwest Cascadia subduction zone from Northern California all the way up through here right along here can't see it but it's there trust me it's a subducting plate a Juan de Fuca plate here kind of subducting underneath this giant North American plate here and uh, uh, all sorts of action being played out here with the Pacific plate as well um, so it's just a very uh, sensitive area when it comes to plate tectonics and uh, uh, geology out here a lot at stake and a lot at play a lot of pressures being applied out here but this is over the last week definitely a large-scale trimmer movement along pretty much the entire well we're missing a few sections here but it's pretty widespread along the Cascadia subduction zone this is trimmer not earthquakes being detected but trimmer way down below in the subducting sliding area if you will not the locked section we were seeing that well we we would see earthquakes out here along the lock section and they would be big ones if um, if that does happen but the slippage right here is the movement way down below uh, between the two plates the North American and the subducting Juan de Fuca plate here but it's on a large scale folks we're not seeing it really cluttered in one spot like we normally would this is along almost the entire thing uh, not quite all the way up north not quite into uh, Central Oregon but nonetheless uh, and, and then again you gotta look at this if this part is moving subducting underneath in large amounts here right we're getting that slippage way down below it's continuing to build up right and lock further up into towards the surface where the locked section of the cascadia subduction zone is here's another thing if almost this entire section here is seen movement and we're not seeing that here in central oregon what does that tell you that that tells me that there's that it could be i believe a breaking point when when the uh, cascadia subduction zone does go at least i believe it's going to be starting right off here off gold beach region uh off of central oregon and i've heard quite a few folks uh scientists and whatnot mention that as well they believe that's going to be a the area rupture um i just see this and look uh thinking that this just can't be good far as uh, pressure goes because it's got to be building up big time in this area uh, kind of like a Boeing effect I guess if you will if you got one piece to the north moving subducting and one piece to the south subducting it's almost like breaking in half in, in, a, in a sense I wish I could think of a, a different uh, a different example but yeah it's just it's just not good there's a lot going on out here along the west coast folks we're just waiting you know a lot of folks scared but uh it's better it's just be good to be prepared 
No need to be scared out here. A little earthquake up by Gridley, California. Beautiful town. Not. Just kidding. Uh, I don't know. Gridley is an okay town, I guess. Um, and that's kind of out here in the Sacramento Valley. Well, actually, where did it go here? Okay, this is kind of way... Where'd the... Uh, wait a minute here. Okay, let's go back and double check. Okay, that's probably a, a little bit smaller earthquake right there is what I'm guessing. Let me see here real quick here. Yeah, that's going to be a 2.4. So the threshold is not showing up really yet. Uh, actually, it should be because it's all magnitudes. So, there's Gridley. There's that. To me, it just looks a little bit closer to Gridley on the other map. Than, uh, than what this USGS map is showing. So, okay. Anyway, this is up towards the foothills. There are fault systems up here. You start getting into the uh, large Sierra Nevada mountains, right? Uh, some pretty huge mountains up here. Uh, this is not anywhere near volcano. Uh, there's some lakes up here, but the foothills, uh, as you get up in higher elevation, right? You get the foothills, and then you get into the Sierra Nevadas of California. So, uh, definitely a lot of fault systems out there, and not. Uh, you know, not really, uh, we do see earthquakes up there. There's a lot of fault systems up here. So and this is just kind of a little tiny one, a 2.4. But still, definitely a lot of pressure out here along the West Coast, folks. I believe, uh, you know, we're not done with the activity in Southern California by a long shot. Nevada is still seeing some microquaking going on up here. You know, that's been happening for quite a while now. That's the area where I took a trip to uh, last month, or was it the month before? I can't remember. Time's been flying by pretty quick. But uh, drove around out there, seen what I could find. Seen some ghost towns, some cool sites, but no, uh, really no, no damage there uh, that I could tell at the surface level. Um, it, after those, uh, you know, that large quake that struck back there, I can't remember the magnitude, but they're still having some aftershocks, and um, you know. Inland into the interior west here, inner mountain west. Uh, pretty quiet up in Idaho, Montana. I've seen a little quaking going on, nothing big. Yellowstone is pretty quiet. I do have the uh, Yellowstone thumbnails here to take a look here, real quick. As you can see, not a whole lot of earthquake activity out here. This here appears to be something uh, close to the seismic data station here but it looks to be like some type of interference there in the northeast corner of the park i don't see any specific earthquakes other than uh down towards the south these little spikes right here indicating uh registered earthquakes this possibly could just be a uh, recalibrate recalibration adjustment there on the seismograph stations uh, that's given those little readings like that but uh, other than that no swarming no weird activity uh, kind of like, you know, what we were seeing there a few days ago, or almost a week now ago. I got to catch up on my time, man. Time's just going by like crazy. So, all good in that department of Yellowstone. Um, trimmer map. And North Carolina did have a little 3.2 downgraded from the USGS to a 2.9 earlier. And it looks like they had another earthquake shortly thereafter. Uh, 2.2 it looks like within the same region you can see those quakes there so still a little bit of earthquake activity out there but uh, now I'm sure folks felt the 2.9 if I remember correctly uh, there was definitely uh, some reporting going on there pretty crazy how folks out there east of the Rockies can experience a, a 2.9 magnitude quake there uh, so you can see a lot of readings there near Sparta North Carolina and uh, looks like Glade Valley, North Carolina as well. So, Anyway, folks, uh, just giving a quick recap on what's going on out there, you know, with that new swarming, and uh, it's just something to keep an eye on. I do have some data stations, as always, coming up here on the uh, live seismograph stations. Looks like a couple have gone offline. Uh, British Columbia, Mendocino along the northern California coast, and also Mount St. Helens is currently offline. Uh, it's possible they could be doing some type of um, calibration adjustment or sensitivity adjustment on it but we do have uh, Barrett California in Southern California and also Mammoth Lakes and the Chuckawalla Mountains there uh, near the epicenter of the swarming activity in SoCal so Mammoth Lakes seen a little bit of a spike of an earthquake right there but other than that uh, 
we're not seeing any swarming activity pick up on the seismographs right now. And hopefully they get those data stations back up and running there. Most of the time they do, they're, they're down for probably an hour or so, but uh, I'll keep an eye on it. So anyway, folks, have a good night out there. Please stay safe. Um, I am, just real quick, I am kind of putting together a little video of, uh, of an area here where I live, or at least close by. Uh, the coastal ranges of Northern California, there's a lot of interesting uh, fossils and stuff like that that I can find at higher elevations here along the coast range. I'm talking uh, oyster shells, uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, sea, sea creatures, you know, if you will, uh, fossilized that is, right, because they're way up there. We haven't had ocean water here in the valley for a very long time. But it's very interesting to uh, see these fossilized sea creatures uh, way up here in the mountains and, uh, and to study the, uh, geology and the geology in the past of, of what these mountains may have witnessed. And so I'm kind of putting together a little video uh, and I'll go, I'll definitely, it, it'll be fully explainable on, on what we're looking at and how these mountains and stuff formed. Uh, but it's something I'm working on. It's going to take me a little time to put together. But I think you guys will like it once I get done with it. And it's pretty amazing the type of fossils up there, uh, you know, way up there in the elevation. And it, it's it's like that everywhere. You can see, you can find them in Texas. You can find them in the uh, Sierra Nevadas. But uh, I'm just kind of focusing on kind of where I live here. So anyway, have a good night, folks. I'll quit rambling. Uh, take care. And we'll chat you guys another time. Peace out.